This is Stuff You Like and Deep Work Changed My Life. Or, to be strictly accurate, reading Deep Work by Cal Newport helped reset my life. I love me some Cal Newport, and most of that is down to the fact that I find his ideas quite compelling. The idea, for example, that one can do big things and make an impact on the world, fabulous. And that the route to this accomplishment is through skills, skills which can be learned and practiced rather than talents which are innate and inborn, even better. Although, yes, obviously natural talent does play a role in things. I reviewed a Cal Newport book for Stuff You Like's fourth anniversary, when I rhapsodized about So Good They Can't Ignore You. So Good They Can't Ignore You is a treatise on doing really, really good work. Why doing really, really good work and learning rare and valuable skills is the key to a good and happy life, and why follow your passion is terrible advice in about 95% of cases. Deep Work is in many ways the follow-up to that, because it answers the question brought up by So Good They Can't Ignore You. How? How does one become so good that one's contributions to a field or job or whatever speak for themselves? How do we get there? Cal's answer, do a lot of deep work by which I mean cognitive capability expanding work. Or to put it another way, if you are good at concentrating deeply and thinking hard about difficult things, then you can master new skills quickly, produce better work overall, and produce that work at a faster pace. Or just more efficiently, so you have more free time to do other more fun things. The book is divided into two sections, and the first section attempts to sell you on the concept. What is deep work? Why does the author think it is so useful? The second section attempts to teach you how to become better at the skill itself. Part 1 has a pretty simple premise. Deep work, the ability to concentrate hard on things and make significant progress on them, is becoming increasingly valuable in a knowledge-based information economy. At the same time, it is becoming increasingly rare because our attention is becoming ever more fragmented. Social media and infotainment sites like BuzzFeed, Cal argues, are in many ways kind of like having a slot machine in your pocket. They are entertaining in an erratic sort of fashion, and it's entertainment that can be accessed any time, any place, anywhere. Thus we are losing our capacity for boredom, and subsequently our ability to concentrate on hard things. Not only that, but the constant checking of email or slack during the day is fragmenting our attention and creating attention residue which carries over into our next task. Humans in general are terrible multitaskers, but it turns out that even switching between tasks is terrible for your concentration. But truth to tell, I personally did not need selling on the concept of deep work as valuable, because I may have mentioned it, I have a kid. I read and wrote the script for So Good They Can't Ignore You while I was pregnant, and filmed it while I was pregnant, and the actual thing didn't come out until my baby was two months old. I spent the first 14 months of my child's life in a state of advanced sleep-deprived distraction. Everything was difficult because sleep deprivation is the worst. But even when I started getting a mostly full night of sleep again, I realised that something weird and disturbing had happened. My concentration span was shot. Writing long-form essays or scripts in one go was was next to impossible. I knew I had done it before. When I was 17, I used to write three essays a week for homework, plus all of the other subjects that I had to keep on the go. Clearly, back in the days before smartphones and Twitter and Am I Being Unreasonable, I was able to focus. So surely I could learn it again. And thus part two is my favourite part, because part two teaches you specific tactics in order to improve your ability to do deep work. This includes things like having a shutdown ritual after you finish work so you stop and when you're done, you're done for the evening. It also includes scheduling your internet time so you don't just pick up your smartphone every single time you get even slightly bored. It encourages you to clarify your goals and then look at all of the network tools that you use, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and decide which of those will really help you to achieve your goals. There are also tactical tips for improving your memory, like learning how to memorise a deck of cards, or improving your cognitive capabilities by studying the Torah at 5am, which I can imagine is a pretty challenging task. But I have particularly found severely limiting social media to be a very helpful practice. Because that shiz is brain crack and I am weak. If you're someone who wants to do really good work and has grand ambitions, but find yourself constantly procrastinating and distracted and kind of low-level anxious all the time, maybe give deep work a read. Because maybe the problem isn't that you're incapable, maybe it's just that you've never learned how to do deep work, and you're a little bit addicted to brain crack. I've never been a particularly anxious person, but I have noticed a lower level of general anxiety when I severely limit Twitter and Tumblr and Facebook. Plus, reading deep work gets me excited to do difficult stuff, and that's never a bad thing. And overall, I think a world in which people do more great work and less arguing on Facebook can only be a good thing.